god, Annette. I'm so sorry I didn't save you, but you know what I do to vampires. What I have to do. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're looking at 10 more Easter eggs in Netflix's Castlevania adaptations that only players would notice. If there's something you think we missed, be sure to check out our first video. And beware spoilers ahead for both the original show and its sequel series, Nocturne. Leon Belmont's Portrait In our first video, when we talked about the Belmont Hold's many Easter eggs, we left this one out since the characters talk about it themselves. But since so many of you left comments, let's talk about Leon Belmont. After Trevor, Sypha, and Alucard enter the Belmont's ancestral home, you can spot a portrait on the wall. This, of course, is of Leon Belmont, who stars in the first chronological game in the series, Lament of Innocence. The show's Leon moved into the region following the migration of monsters, and built the family home. I think it was a Leon Belmont who entered the region first. <clears throat> and he built this house, and dug the foundations for everything under it. In a similar vein, the game's version dedicated his life, as well as those of his descendants, to fighting evil for all time. This whip and my kinsmen will destroy you someday. From this day on, the Belmont clan will hunt the night. Nocturne's Big Bads. When it was announced that Nocturne would focus on Richter, many players were expecting elements from Rondo of Blood and Symphony of the Night. While those elements are there, the villains come from a game set long after Richter's time. What will you give up to prove your love for me? What do you want? Submission. Bloodlines follows John Morris and Eric Lacard, fighting the forces of evil. In that game, Drolta is a witch who serves her vampiric master, Elizabeth Bartley, who happens to be Dracula's niece. However, in the show, Drolta is a succubus working for the slightly differently named Urzabet Bathory. The show's main villain is said to be a vampire messiah whose immense power could easily be explained if the showrunners decide to keep her heritage. Behold, the devourer of lights. Richter's Gesture This one's small, but one of many things from the games that the showrunners have lovingly included. In the first episode of Nocturne, Richter and Maria pay a visit to the Abbot. When they leave, Richter waves goodbye to Mizrak with a three-fingered gesture. Thank you. Those who only watch the shows would think nothing of it. But keen-eyed gamers would know he's used it before, specifically in Rondo of Blood. But what is your name? I'm Richter Belmont. Richter is a fan-favorite Belmont, and this simple gesture is famous to certain players. It was even used as one of his victory poses in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. The fact that the show's creators found a way to slip it in is impressive. Germain's Original Wardrobe Saint Germain is introduced in Season 3 of the original show. He plays a fairly big role in the overall plot, though he only appears in one mainline game from the series, Curse of Darkness. I know far more than you imagine, but I cannot act upon that knowledge. That is my <laughs> arrangement. I may only observe. In that game, he's a mysterious and exquisitely dressed time traveler. While he still looks sharp in the show, we don't see him in his video game attire until a flashback in Season 4 and it's still only seen briefly. The look is a spot-on recreation, from the tip of his top hat to the bottom of his pinstripe pants. While casual viewers would see a wealthy man dressing as such as nothing special, it's always a nice signal to players how much those working on the show care for the source material. Maria's Companions Well, ask. I don't really command them. But, yes, it feels like for a little while they're part of me. Through Maria, Nocturne introduces viewers to a different style of magical fighting. She has the ability to create portals, summoning creatures to battle for her. We see her use birds, a tortoise, and a white tiger. Although the animals look a bit different, this is pretty accurate to how she fights in the games. However, players will notice that one of her summons is missing, a dragon. Well, yeah, giving her a dragon in Season 1 probably would have made a lot of those fights much shorter, but the characters will all undoubtedly grow in strength as the show progresses. 
so we wouldn't be surprised if Maria gained her scaly companion in the future. Losing a loved one. Take me. In the season finale of Nocturne, Terra sacrifices herself to save her daughter Maria, letting Urtzebet turn her into a vampire. This adapts a similar event in the games, though changes some important details. Rondo of Blood follows Richter venturing into Dracula's castle to rescue his girlfriend Annette. He meets Maria and Terra, in this game a nun, along the way. In the PSP remake, the Dracula X Chronicles, it's possible for Dracula to turn Annette into a vampire if you don't rescue her in time. However, the show's version of Richter and Annette, while flirty, are not that close. So instead, it's Terra who gets turned, meaning Richter loses two mother figures in the course of one season. Legion. We've seen a ton of the franchise's villains and monsters adapted for the small screen, though Legion is one of the more disturbing ones. In episode 9 of season 3, Isaac battles a wizard who's powerful enough to not only mind control a ton of people, but to use their bodies to create a horrifying sphere of death. It's a pretty gnarly sight, but fans of the games would recognize this amalgamation as Legion. The boss first appeared in Symphony of the Night, but has popped up in several other games. It's such a visually striking design for an enemy that we would have been shocked had the show not included it. The Wisdom of Youth Here we have another obscure reference to Rondo of Blood. During the penultimate episode of Nocturne, Maria visits her father the abbot to try and find a peaceful solution. Despite his misdeeds, he argues that what he's doing is right as he's following God's path. But Maria makes it clear that doesn't justify anything. No matter how complicated you make it, evil is still evil. Her words to her father are almost identical to something she says to Dracula in Rondo of Blood. Upon the villain's defeat, Dracula deflects blame by stating his return was brought on by humanity's vile nature. I don't understand what that means! No matter how complicated you make it, a bad thing is still a bad thing! Although she's speaking to a different person, the message remains the same. Trying to justify evil acts doesn't change the fact that they're evil. Divine Bloodlines Richter's arc in Nocturne deals heavily with the fear and shame felt from his part in his mother's death. While this caused his magic to lie dormant for years, it returned in one of the most crowd-pleasing moments of the series that also holds two brilliant easter eggs. After meeting his grandfather Just, the pair are held captive by a pack of vampires. When his allies are threatened, Richter has a Super Saiyan moment where blue flame courses through his body. It then takes on the form of a large, fiery blue cross, paying homage to his ultimate attack, Grand Cross. The scene is also accompanied by an orchestral version of Divine Bloodlines, which was first used in Richter's debut, Rondo of Blood, and has since become his theme. There's something you forgot about Belmonts. <laughs> Stupid of me. I'd forgotten it too. We publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Worst Ending While we were expecting Richter to be the sole Belmont for the majority of Nocturne, Just made a surprise appearance in the show's latter half. Old and weary from past adventures, he tells Richter about the loss of his wife Liddy and best friend Maxim at the hands of the vampire Lord Ruthven. I had a wife. Your grandmother, Liddy. And a friend, too, if you can believe that. His name was Maxim. A vampire killed them both. In his game, Harmony of Dissonance, he and Maxim venture into Dracula's castle to rescue Liddy. However, the game features three different endings, the worst of which sees Just lose both of his allies. Since Netflix's adaptation is pretty dark, it chose to give Juice the saddest of the outcomes. The Season 2 announcement trailer features a shot of Liddy's gravestone, meaning this bad ending will be further explored. Evil will always win, Richter. Whatever it is, evil. And it's everywhere. It will always be stronger than us. 
Did you catch these Easter eggs? What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets! Are there any others you feel no one noticed? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, there's more where that came from.